Welcome to episode 7 of Emulating Ronaldo Series 2. And we're at that age now where we're starting to think about retirement. Possibly next episode we'll see a few retirements. But we're at the age of 30 now. Coming towards the end of our prime, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do the usual thing where we go down the list. Uh, you know, biggest value to smallest. Uh, but in, I'm just going to blabber away whilst I show you a few things. And remember to comment um, about your favourite player. Because, just a reminder, you've got the chance of winning a copy of FM15 in episode 10. That will be the last episode. So I will pick everyone that has commented regularly from episode 1 to 9. Um, and put them into a list and choose a winner from that list. And it's probably only going to be 15 to 20 of you. Because there's not been a huge number of you commenting on every single video. So that's... Uh, uh, you've got a much better chance of winning this time compared to previous times. So it really is your, you know, to your benefit, those of you that don't have the game, uh, it's actually to comment and um, support your, your favourite player. So continue to do so. Thank you for all the support so far. It has been wonderful. Um, but yeah, just a reminder. So I'm going to go down the list like usual. Uh, first of all, though, we're going to look at who won that Champions League in episode 6 that we we uh, were one day before the Champions League final so we have a quick look so as you can see Juventus did win that Champions League so they won three in a row in total um, Sampdoria actually won the pre uh, just the one just gone so a few of you playing for Sampdoria have finally won a Champions League which is brilliant um, where am I going to look we, we want to go to here let's just have a quick look at this Josh Cunnington scored a penalty in the final. Fantastic stuff. We can't see it, unfortunately. Doesn't seem to save things, which is a bit annoying. But, um, yeah, so brilliant stuff. Against Torino as well, an all-Italian final. Arsenal won the previous one to that, 3-1 against Bayern Munich. And Juventus won the previous one to that, 1-0 in extra time against Man United. And the one that we um, didn't see it was, in fact, a 1-0 victory for Juventus against PSG. So it really has been very dominant for... For Juventus in recent years, but Sampdoria, it's really good. Oh, what's this? Go away! It's really good to see uh, Sampdoria winning because we've got lots of players playing for them, of course. Anyway, we start with Marcus Duncombe. He's valued at the most now, thirty-one point five million. Our Austrian, fifty-one goals in ninety-eight appearances for Austria. He is one of our Sampdorian players, so he has won a Champions League, which is fantastic. He's been at Sampdoria for ages since moving for free from AC Milan. Um, he played in that final. Let's just have a quick look at the player ratings. We didn't actually look. So we had Cristiano Belenta playing in the final. Um, who else? Matthew Harmon, Duncom, Cunnington's the captain and got a goal from the penalty spot. So I think that's four. Is that everyone? I believe so. So four players in that Sampdoria team. That's that's really quite unusual for of our players to be at one team and a team that's winning a Champions League as well it's fantastic to see they really are huge uh, we'll look at their league performance in a bit as well Liam Lagana plays for Arsenal so also won a Champions League 52 goals in 103 games for Malta really has been very good for, for Malta in fact, he's not even... Has he just retired from international football? Yes, he has, last year. So the top player is now David Agius, who, yeah, so and a an Hibernian player as well. Anyway, how's he done at Arsenal recently? Lots of very good average ratings over the years. He's been an a Arsenal legend, I guess. Um, I, we'll have a quick look at Arsenal to see if he is a legend. But he's um, won the World Club Championship, of course, after winning the Champions League with Arsenal. Oh, maybe he didn't play in the final. Oh, wait, we need 2027. He should have been in the team, surely. Oh, no, we're, we're going everywhere. What's going on? Perhaps he didn't actually play in the final because of some sort of sp suspension, possibly. But I'm, I'm sure you would in real life pick up a medal because he's in the dream team so he would have played enough games to pick up a medal and um, it just doesn't seem to process that unfortunately on the game because he's definitely 
won that competition. He just probably didn't play in the final. But um, World Club Championship under his belt as well. Good stuff from Liam Lagana. Uh, what were we going to do? Just lost my train of thought there. I thought I was going to do something and I forgot. But never mind. Maximus Balington, our third player. Uh, eight goals in 90 games for uh, Andorra, who are 180. First in the world, I think they've been higher at one point. I think he has retired from international football. Yes, a year ago, a lot of the big players that get sort of lots of caps for these smaller nations and big nations as well seem to retire at the age of 29. 2027 is a popular year to retire from international football for whatever reason. It doesn't really make that much sense, but um, especially getting to 90 when he could easily get to 100 when he's only 29, doesn't make much sense to me. He's still at Bayern Munich who in the first, well, the Bundesliga finished, they've, they've won it. In fact, they've won it twice in the last three years, which is great to see. So good for Maximus Balington picking up a few things. He's won the Super Cup as well, the German Cup. German Cup, oh, he's won so many things. Beast of a player. Uh, runners up in the Champions League as well, I think. Javier Robertinho. A Brazilian who's um, oh he's not retired from international duty by the looks of it 90 caps of Brazil though 6 goals but he's more of a defensive player and he's at Juventus still after moving for free from Real Madrid played a lot more games this season in fact 7.63 average rating in the league as well which is great to see achievements wise managed to win Serie A so Sampdoria did win it once they've won it twice in total but Juventus have won it every single time other than that. They really have dominated. Um, and they've, of course, won lots of Champions Leagues as well, which Robertinho has been a part of. He's, he's just won so much. He's been absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, fantastic stuff. He was shortlisted for the World Golden Ball. Let's have a quick look at the most recent ones. But I don't think any of them have been in there. But players have been shortlisted, which is good to see. Patrick Roberts was... World Player of the Year, the English player who started at Fulham, is at Man United on this, and Raheem Sterling last year. Uh, Patrick Roberts second, Raheem Sterling. Uh, I mean, Sterling's he's no spring chicken, but he's winning it at the age of 30. Uh, obviously, Roberts is winning it as well at the age of 30. So that's interesting, very interesting indeed. And Sampdorian player being in there. Okay, moving on. Roberto Corelli was valued at you know, about 35 million or more for quite a while. And he's incredible, really. Still playing for Serbia, 51 goals in 97 games for Serbia, who are 26th in the world at this stage. Um, and he's still at Atletico Madrid. He's a bit of an Atletico Madrid legend, I guess. Well, he definitely must. Well, he must be because he's scored lots of goals. They won the league two seasons ago, second this season. Barcelona dominated for three years. But it's good to see Atletico back up there winning a title. Fantastic stuff. Oh, I was going to look at um, Legends, wasn't I, for Arsenal. Oh, we'll, we'll try and remember to do every sort of team at one, one point or another. Um, where do we need to go to look at players? History. Oh, it looks a bit different this year. I don't think he's on that list, in fact. You'd have thought he would be. It's a bit strange, really. Koke is in the uh, Legends. He's, he's still there in Atletico B team. OK, moving on. Bradley Handelaar, our Dutch legend. Three goals in 129 games for Holland. Hasn't retired yet. Still going. And he's still at Man City, where he's putting in some very, very good performances for his team. And has he won much recently? They won the Capital One Cup in 2028. Um, but they haven't really won anything other than that. He's broke the Man City record for worst discipline in a season. <laughs> um, but I suppose that's his position he's expected to. Beat West Ham in the Capital One Cup final. How did Handelar do? Who, who have we got here? Mushrooms there on the bench. Didn't come off though. Perhaps they played a sort of secondary team. There's Handelar. Okay. And Watford and Chelsea have won it the previous two seasons to that. League, let's have a quick look. Premiership and United have won it the last three seasons. Southampton were second last season. Watford up there, QPR. 
South End into the Premiership got relegated though, unfortunately. Brentford are up there. Okay, moving on. Dylan Knight, uh, San Marino player. He's 24 goals in 87 games, but has retired from San Marino duty and has left them 173rd in the world. Uh, he's their top player, this guy. Oh no, it's, it's not looking good for San Marino yet again after Dylan Knight has retired. Moved to Man United on a free. He wasn't there. He was at Napoli for years, as we know, uh, but has eventually moved to the Premiership. And he's played quite well for Man United and, of course, has been part of two title-winning um, teams already, plus winning the FA Cup. Burnley won it previous season in Liverpool. Man United 3 Tottenham 2 in the final. None of our players scoring there. But still, good to be a part of that. Well done, Dylan Knight. Jens Rustjevels. Oh, this is going to be another long video, guys, but I'm sure you're used to it now. Yep, he's still at Juventus. Three goals in 94 games for Belgium. Still playing for Belgium. Has, of course, made the team of the world team of the year two or three times, I think. And has been at Juventus four seasons now, getting very good average ratings. Didn't play so many games this season, but of course has won quite a few things with them. Wow, that's weird. That's not showing up until I go down. Interesting. <laughs> On to Mushroom. Uh, English Man City player. Seven goals. Ah, I just smashed my knee on my desk. <laughs> Seven goals in 98 games for England. 150k a week. Almost reached that 100 mark. Will he make it? Will he retire on 99? It's quite predictable, isn't it? Um, he's uh, been at Man City his whole career. Done very well. Of course, has won many things. Had a few injuries, as you can see. Nothing major, I don't think. Um, oh, no, what's going on? We There we go. World Cup runners-up of England. So Argentina won the last World Cup, beating England in the final. Yep, here we go. Harath Hamoud with the goal. Oh, brilliant. He scored in a World Cup final. Is that our first player to score in a World Cup final? The centre-back. Oh, the game's all gone all dodgy. It's just dead. Who else played in this final? I don't think I did. Patrick Roberts. We saw... Oh, I come off the bench with... Uh, Mushroom didn't play in the final. But I did. Ah, oh, that's magnificent stuff. Did Grazianta play? Whatever his name is. Is he in the team? Doesn't look like it, does it? Hmm. Okay, let's go back. On to Mitchell Bowsen, the other Maltese player. 25 goals in 94 games for Malta. Has retired from international football, though. But he's still at AC Milan, been there four seasons after leaving from Real Sociedad. As we know, AC Milan haven't really managed to, to dominate anything lately. They did win the Euro Cup, though, which is great to see. Uh, AC Milan, Roma and Leverkusen winning the last three. Let's move on. It Italian teams have been very dominant on this save, haven't they? Which is unusual. Ahmed Shah, our Pakistani. 29 caps for Pakistan. Is at Juventus also after moving there from Barcelona a while ago for big money. And he's been a, a good solid player for them in defence. And of course, he's won plenty of things. I really don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Strange. Josh Cunnington, our Australian, has got 118 caps, 78 goals, and he's now retired a year ago. But he did so well for Australia, didn't he? And of course, he's at Sampdoria. Um, he's been there his whole career and has just won so many things with them lately, which is um, magnificent for him. Uh, he's, of course, won the Champions League most recently in 2028, even though that's not showing. <laughs> uh, yeah, great stuff. Matthew Harmon. From the Congo. 26 goals in 88 games for Congo. Has retired from international duty like so many other people. Another one of our Sampdoria players, of course, has managed to win lots of things with Sampdoria. Ah, they're, oh, it appeared that time. They're doing very well. Marcio Salgado is at Bayern Munich. Portugal. Uh, he's got four goals in 70 games for Portugal. He really has been a very good international player. And has won a few things with Bayern Munich. Let's move on to Nelius Nihelm, our Norwegian, who has retired from international duty as well after 74 games and has been at Atletico most of his career, hasn't he? 
after leaving Chelsea a while ago. Um, hasn't won much recently. Well, he's won the league, of course, but that's not showing, as I've explained in previous episodes. Ashwin Sabeli has finally played one more game for Nepal, and he's actually got a goal. I, I don't really understand why he doesn't play, um, because he's obviously their best player. Uh, but he's at Napoli, been there quite a while, done very well for them. And hasn't really won much with Napoli. And Napoli haven't been so good on this save, have they? They usually do quite well. Angelo Ernescu, a Portuguese player, has uh, one more game to go to get 100 caps as the goalkeeper of Portugal. So surely he's going to get that very soon. So he's been at Roma since his move from Porto for 12.75 million. So that's a big move for him. And... He's uh, won the Italian Cup, the Euro Cup, and since then, well, since moving anyway. Let's go down to Cristiano Bolanta, another Sampdoria player who has 10 goals in 84 games for Indonesia. And, of course, we know what Sampdoria have won. So, yeah, great stuff from Cristiano Bolanta. He's become a very good player. Martin Madge. From Bhutan, 12 goals in 48 games for them. And he's at Marseille still, been there quite a while. Don't know if he's won anything yet. Uh, if he's been runners up a couple of times. Mixture of teams winning the French Cup. And what's this? Is this the uh, this is the French leagues? PSG, Monaco. I thought we used to be able to see the um, the French leagues up. Oh, I really don't know what's going on. <laughs> Let's go back. Erdi von Hunter was the lowest value player in the last episode simply because he didn't have a club, but he's now worth 13.5 million. 15 goals in 80 games for Turkey is at, at Saint, Saint, I can't talk, Saint Etienne in France, uh, where he moved for free from Man City, and he's done very, very well for them. In fact, his average rating overall is 7.55 which is incredible, really. For, he's worth his, well, his transfer fees have totaled forty-five million, which is interesting to see. He's been a very good player. Um, hasn't won anything with Saint Etienne, but had a few competition victories in his early days with Man City. Anguilla Graciante, uh, Argentina, has now got nine caps for Argentina. Never quite broken into the full team um, and played lots and lots of games, which is unfortunate because, of course, they did win the World Cup on our save but he wasn't part of that team unfortunately um, would have been nice to see one of our players win the World Cup he's uh, still not managed to win the Portuguese Premier League in fact this team Fer Ferreira P Ferreira I'm not sure what that represents but they uh, won the league in 2026 which is interesting because I haven't seen them anywhere close to winning the league previously Okay, moving down, moving on to Nathan Alderson from Moldova, four goals in 71 games for them. He has retired from international football, he's now at Valencia after moving for free from Atletico, where he just never really played, um, and he's played a lot more games for Valencia, which is great to see, uh, but probably won't win a huge amount. I mean, there's the odd chance that he could win something with them. Let's go down... Kostas Chilabu, our Greek player, five goals in 114 games for Greece, still playing for them and still at Arsenal, been there pretty much his whole career apart from the first season and he's of course won a few things with them, Champions League included. So Arsenal eventually went in the Champions League, which you got to, I mean Arsenal fans, you got to be happy with. <laughs> it's been a long old slog. Okay, this is me now, Paul Holden, still at um, Chelsea, of course I've Got a World Cup runners up winners. Well, no, World Cup runners up medal, not winners. I'm not a winner. 13 goals in 68 games for England. And I've been at Chelsea my entire career and had very good average ratings in total 7.46. Very good. Uh, recent years haven't really won a huge amount. Won the European Nations League. What is this? I don't understand. What is it? Is this something that's coming into play soon? Well, anyway, England won that, whatever that is. Of course, World Cup runners-up in 2026. Capital One Cup winners, but nothing recently. Okay, Franciano Mann 
from Colombia. Six goals in 79 games for Colombia. He's moved to Hertha for 13.5 million from Arsenal. He's done okay there. Not Nothing spectacular. Uh, won the Copa America with Colombia. Uruguay, Argentina, USA, Brazil have won it since the start of this save for those interested in that. Okay, Johan Adolson, lots of support for the Swedish goalkeeper. Looks very good. 39 caps for Sweden now, who are 25th in the world. Um, but has never quite, you know, won um, anything major. But has done quite well for MK Dons. They did get relegated to the championship, but I think I just saw that they did in fact win it last season meaning he'll be in the Premiership once again next season. But will he stay there? I don't know. But he's uh, he's done quite well with MK Dons, and hopefully maybe they can establish themselves again in the top division and Adolfsson can continue to thrive as a goalkeeper because he's now worth 11.5 million. He's halfway up the list. Jack O'Halloran at Man City, 94 caps for Ireland. Still part of the team. Still winning things with Manchester City. And playing plenty of games for Man City. Not much else to add. Rob Vernon at Man United from Gibraltar. He has retired from international football for getting 15 goals in 75 caps. And didn't play so many games the last couple of seasons. I'm not really sure why. But of course they have won three titles in a row which he has been a part of. And the FA Cup as well last season. So well done Rob Vernon. But you may need to move on at some point. Tom Larson, 127 caps for Denmark. Finally retired last season. Zero goals, though, in those 127 games, which is fantastic. Well, it's just it's just funny, isn't it? Uh, poor old Tom Larson never managed to get one, a goal for, for Denmark. Um, but has been a great player all round. Fantastic player for Chelsea uh, since his move right at the start. Well done, Tom Larson. Very good career. Possibly the best. One of the best. I think in episode 10, we'll have a vote to see who you think was the best player overall. Just take into account everything. It doesn't even have to be the person that's won the most. French, uh, Karen Patel, sorry. Also at Chelsea. Eight goals in 73 games for India. Has retired from international football. India are currently 135th in the world. And he's been at Chelsea quite a while. Four seasons now. Um, done okay for them. There's won a few things with them. Three cup competitions. As Drubal Barrego, our Portuguese player. He's only got nine caps of Portugal, but he's picked up a few, which is good. Um, achievements wise, hasn't really won much with Leon, where he's been for four years after moving for 17 million. Been a good player. But um, nothing spectacular. Hareta Mood, of course, scored in the World Cup final, despite being our third Englishman and who has the least caps out of the three Englishmen. One goal in 32 games for England. His only goal for England has been in the World Cup final, which is fantastic. Also, another player that is at Chelsea and has been there three seasons, but hasn't quite broken into... Like as a regular first team player, he's 17 games in the Premiership. It's not bad, and has won a few things. Runners up, of course, in that World Cup. Oscar Anzola, our Venezuelan, is at MK Dons now. 12 goals in 73 games for MK Dons, and moved there from Liverpool for free, where he was never quite a superstar for them. Um, moved for free and played one season in the Premiership, got relegated, but he's been promoted back to the Premiership with MK Dons. So two players at MK Dons, as it happens, which is strange. Hayden Eyre, the Welsh <laughs> traitor, moving to Czech Republic for his second nationality. He's not really a traitor then, is he? But 12 goals in 62 games. Thanks for all the comments from Hayden Eyre on the videos. Uh, always got good insight and interesting things to say. Uh, last three seasons, still been at Stoke, who finished, where did they finish? Finished mid-table, 11th player last season. He's sort of been that mid-table player, I guess, and has been solid, been a one-man team, which is always admirable. Um, but will he ever move on? We'll have to see. Won the Capital One Cup, that's it, really, and has sort of won 
various sort of got into the team of the years and that sort of thing for Czech Republic and Stoke. Mario Bradatelli, our Azerbaijani, who are currently 131st in the world, but he has retired from international duty after 22 goals in 72 caps. And he's still at Chelsea, despite never really playing many games at all. It's a very strange concept. that he's, I don't really understand why he's still there, but this is the most games he's played for, you know, five seasons. Um, he needs to move, really, but he's still winning things with Chelsea, which is good to see. But he probably needs to move on at some point. Mahmoud Wahid, he's finally retired from international football. 78 goals and 78 caps. Incredible. Um, uh, well, it's just incredible, really. But um, it's a shame he didn't get more goals and caps, which is what he was ha- had in every single episode up to this stage. He's played for QPR for ages um, in the Premiership. Never been a superstar player, but obviously internationally he's done very well. So perhaps your vote will go to Mahmoud Wahidi as the best player in our list in episode 10. Uh, well, you can put your best pl- who you best think is the best player so far. In the comment section below, if you fancy, um, you know, just comment away. I like reading all your comments. I like seeing comments on this this video and seeing what you see that I don't. Statistical approach has, yeah, done okay lately. He's been a bit of a disappointment, I guess, but he's got three goals in fifty-five games for USA, so he's done okay internationally. Uh, who are the thirty-sixth in the world? So he's playing for a decent team. He's moved to Nantes, Nantes, Nantes. Nantes, yeah, whatever, <laughs> for 3.5 million from Marseille. And he's playing a few more games, nothing major still. And that's a shame, he's just not really pushed on, has he? Since his early days of doing okay for the Atletico B team. Well, very well, in fact, he just Atletico maybe ruined him a little bit. They sold him for a lot of money as well. But, um, yeah... I hope he, he has a good end to his career. He's still got pace and acceleration, though, which is good. Christian Johansson, our other Danish player, 10 goals in 91 games for Denmark, hasn't retired from international duty, so will he get ahead of Tom Larsen for Denmark at some point? We'll have to see. Still at Stoke, he's been there his whole career, but hasn't played like the last two seasons. He's been playing in the reserves this season, um, which is strange, but he's still playing for Denmark. He's a good player don't really understand why he's not playing he's, he's not magnificent i suppose his mental attributes are a bit poor but he's got everything you need from a winger i think so we'll have to see where he goes perhaps he will leave shortly he's unhappy and wants to leave so perhaps he will moving on to randall baron pusey our canadian two goals in 79 games for canada still in the international team, 86 from the world. I think that's quite good for Canada, actually. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that they've never really performed brilliantly at football. Still at Atlanta, not playing many games for them, unfortunately. Um, so maybe he'll have to move on to uh, finish his career. Adrian Ternarski, also Norwegian. Two goals and 57 games in total for them wanted and he's transfer listed by Marseille, Lorient won him, don't know if he's been playing lately, let's have a quick look no, not many games over the last two two seasons, so the bottom sort of quarter of this list has been a little bit disappointing, especially at club level, in terms of international level, everyone's, most players have done pretty well Um, because Tarnaski of course was at Man City for quite a while some players, they they start off really strongly. They're a bit like Michael Owen, I guess. Played very well in their youth. Played very well in the early 20s and then just drop off. I mean, they're world class and then they just drop off to nothing. Players like Michael Owen, Joe Cole. Uh, yeah, so it does happen, of course. Broccoli Radio, prime example of someone that can play reasonably well at international level. 28 goals in 48 games for Ireland. Could have got more. But, um, I mean, with that goal-to-game ratio, that's very good. But, unfortunately... Villa just didn't play him and I, I blame them for ruining him because he's been there his whole career apart from going on loan twice but in fact he has played a lot more since they got relegated as you can see apart from last season the two pre- pre- previous seasons to that he, he just wasn't getting enough goals really to I suppose be considered a very good striker and it's a shame really um, Aston Villa stuck in the championship now which is unusual to see down in fourth, they missed out in the playoffs. Tottenham, 
got relegated at one point. 2027 and Everton. That is interesting. These things do happen. But anyway, that is the end of this episode. I always say that then realise I haven't shown you World Player of the Year. I really should stop saying that. <laughs> because we, we need to show that sort of thing. Because that's Although we've already looked, haven't we? We looked at World Best World uh, Player of the Year, but not World... This is World Cup Best Player. Tim Hadland. <laughs> no, we don't want to see that. We want to see World Team of the Year. That's what interests us most because that's when our players are actually in it. So the last three seasons, have we seen any of our players? Ustravel's appeared once again. Salgado as well. So he's in there. Who else? Any of other players? Don't think so. Next season, Ustravel's once again in it. He's just such a good player. Possibly should be our best player. Voted by you, maybe. Because he's managed to get into the World Team of the Year a few times and this season he wasn't in the list unfortunately Salgado was though for Bayern Munich and Ahmed Shah for Juventus so two of the players there anyone else? don't think so I may oh Liam Lagana there we go in the team of the year 21 goals in 50 games for the Arsenal player so fantastic stuff but thank you for watching episode eight will be up at some point soon and we'll all be 32 or 33 coming towards the end of our careers so like i said three more episodes to go episode eight nine and ten and episode ten the winner will be announced meaning get commenting guys um i guess you, if you want to win or maybe comment on previous videos as well if you haven't watched them or commented but thanks for watching please leave a like subscribe if you haven't done so already and peace.